also this cobra head is shining brightly if you put black light on it. Another object here, you have a perfect worked dolphin head and also this artifact is shining under black light. Here you have a kind of stone helmet. You can put this granite stone helmet on your shoulders or you can lay your head inside it and the inlay points which you see on this helmet some experts told me that these points are exactly the acupuncture points on the human head. Here you can see how it might have been used and a few months ago they found at the same place an unfinished stone helmet so that means that also some of these artifacts were made directly in Ecuador but many many years ago and also the inlay on this object are shining under black light very bright. This is a fantastic jade snake and also the inlay points are shining under black light. Here we have one artifact which is very perfectly carved on the back side so that means it might have been used to put this artifact on the front of your forehead. You can see the two eyes inlaid and on the reverse side you have the so-called third eye. Maybe this artifact was used for some ceremonies or for meditation. Here we have a jade plate with an inlay of a spiral also shining brightly under black light. Another one you can see seven rings inlaid in the jade plate and also shining under black light. Maybe this also could be a presentation of the seven chakras. Here is one of the ceramics found there. It's a great masterpiece and the question is how can you make this artifact out of one piece of ceramic. Here we have another pyramidal stone found also in Ecuador. On top you see the pyramid with the eye and you have down several spirals and symbols. Some of them are very similar to the church word Nakal plates which he found 1880 in India and the translation was talking about the sunken continent of Mu. This is a marble with another inlay of a spiral also shining very brightly under black light. Another stone in a pyramidal form with an inlay of an eye. Here you can see again the pyramid with the eye and on the bottom you see the Orion star constellation, the three Orion stars, which might focus us to the three pyramids in Egypt. Here you have a ceramic statue. You can see the style of sitting is not real pre-Columbian style. It looks like the lotus seat from Asia. On top of this statue you have a head with some points and it looks quite similar to many of the Buddha presentations. He holds a snake in his mouth. The snake is a very, very mystical and very often presented object. So that means this statue is not from any existing or known pre-Columbian culture. Even the next one you can see that how this statue is sitting, it looks more the direction of Asia. On top of his head, again a very strange head, and in the center you can see like the head of a frog. Also the frog is a very mystical animal in old South American pre-Columbian culture, but also in Africa and also in Asia. Here another ceramic statue holding a kind of plate in his left hand and it looks also not really pre-Columbian culture. This is another very strange artifact 
holding a stick with a snake. Again, we have the snake here and the question is where and who this statue was done. This is a photo of the Altiplano in Bolivia. Archaeologists and researchers found out that at least before 4,000 years there was happen a very big impact in Argentine and the shock wave of this big impact destroyed many stone buildings in the Altiplano of Bolivia. You have here a picture of Pumapunku, a very strange place close to Tiahuanaco in Bolivia and you see tons of stone plates with perfect work on it destroyed maybe this was the reaction to the big impact in Argentina. Here you have my friend Giancarlo Bonfanti, Italian researcher, in the center of the so-called Sun Gate in Diawanaco in Bolivia and some researchers write that the figurines on top of this side of the Sun Gate are showing the Venus calendar. Here you have one of the big stone plates from Pumapunco and you can see how perfect this stonework was done. And the question is, could you do such perfect work with simple tools? Close to this area, they found skeletons with a size of 2.6 meters. And the picture on the top shows you the skull of one of these skeletons and it looks like it is deformed but definitely these skulls are not deformed they are natural style like an egg on this photo you see how strong the jaw of those skulls were this is a front view and the most interesting photo is this one because you can see that the top of the skull does not have the three plates which we have as Homo sapiens and that shows us that these skeletons are not Homo sapiens. What we might be able is doing a DNA check and an age dating on these skeletons because we are very much wondering what kind of humans did exist long time ago and how long ago. On the next pictures I show you some artifacts found close by the real giants and when I first time got this mask in my hands I tried to look through the two eyes. At that time I didn't know that they were belonging to 2.6 meter skeletons and I was just wondering why did they make masks where you can only look out from one eye? But after knowing that those people were over 2.5 meters, I could imagine that their skull was, of course, bigger than our skull. And that's why these masks were for us oversized. That's another mask from Bolivia. Another one with very wonderful end carving many spirals and many symbols which we also found in many other cultures. This is a very heavy stone figurine and again here you can see on the top the head of a snake going down on his backside. This is the reverse side you can see again the snake. So that means the snake must have been a very, very important animal in the past of our history. Here you can see a stone flute. The strange thing is that the vibration of the sound of these stone flutes is exactly the same as our brain waves. So that means maybe those flutes were used for meditation or for healing purposes and each two holes are connected perfectly with each other. That means 
You can make perfect holes into this very, very hard stone, but how you connect with simple tools the two holes on the bottom, this would be even in our days a very difficult work to do. Because it's in the shape of a U and it curves around it is, inside the stone. That's right. And with simple tools, you are definitely not able to do such a work. And even the holes are very precise. This is the form of a boat and you have three flute pipes at the end. Here you can see how perfectly they were made. This is another flute, very small. You can use it only with very soft blowing and the sound is like the sound of the dolphins. This is an artifact where we do not have any idea for what purpose it was used. Now we are in Colombia. On the next few photos I show you very strange artifacts from Colombia in South America. The most famous industrial designer and architect in Colombia, Professor Jaime Gutierrez, is collecting strange artifacts from his country already since centuries. His most important piece is the so-called genetic disc. Here you can see a disc made out of lydite, a very hard stone. It's nearly the same hardness as granite, but the structure of lydite is like leaves. So it would be quite impossible to make the same disc in our days out of the same material. The diameter of this disc, we call it the genetic disc, is about 27 centimeters and on this disc you have several things presented which usually you can only see with a microscope. For example on the left side around 11 o'clock you can see one egg, human egg, without and another with spermia. On the right side at approximately one o'clock you can see some spermias and then you have several very strange presentations which we could not explain. But here on the left side you have a microscopic photo from the inside of a lady done by a Swedish photographer and you can see that the egg without and with spermia looks exactly like the presentation on this genetic disc. On the reverse side you have on top several presentations of fetus in different size, different age, ending up with uh, looks like a little child. You see also at the end of the plate around six o'clock female and male and also on the right side around nine o'clock you can see the presentation of man woman and child but the strange thing is how they present those human like heads. Here you can see a knife done by the same material lydite. On top of the knife on the handle you have mother's head, beyond you have the child's head and the umbilical cord is going around the neck of the child so that means this knife would have been used to cut the umbilical cord saving the child's life. This is a close-up mother, child and umbilical cord. This is an instrument it might have been used for helping the child coming out leaving the mother when there were some complications and it is also made out of the same material, lydite. You have here the vagina and the child's head coming out. And on the reverse side, you can put only your thumb inside. That means you can only use this instrument with your fingers, meaning you cannot use... 
Take it away, class. What are we looking at here? I can see an array of pyramids. What's the significance? The significance is that you can find pyramids all over the world on each continent. And the question is, when and who did build those pyramids? Why many of those pyramids all over the world are looking very, very similar? Another question is, did there really exist a global civilization? And I think many of our researches are really telling us that once upon a long time, a global civilization existed. But how many thousands of years ago, we don't know. Most of the audience of Project Camelot may know about the story of one stone pyramid building found in 1984, 25 meters under the sea level in Japan on the island of Yonaguni, which is the southeast Japanese island belonging to the Ryukyu Island group. And there is still a struggling of some international archaeologists who are saying that these monuments were done by nature. But my friend Professor Masaaki Kimura did several years since then researches not only on this monument, but also he found several others close by. On the right side down, you have a model. And uh, one thing nature is definitely not doing on top of two platforms of this monument. There is one huge stone turtle and one huge stone bird like an eagle. Nature is doing many things, but not such a precise, perfect monument. And the question is, where are all the stones if nature would have done it? broken down, where are those stones? There are also streets and there was also found a stone stadium like a Roman Colosseum with stone seat rows and stone stairs. Nature is great, is doing many, many great things, but not such perfect buildings. Here you have the huge stone turtle and you can see also how small is a diver against this big monument. Here you have one street with stairs going up. Here again, a very close up picture just to recognize the size of this huge monument. Here you can see some world maps on the top, on the right side, you can see the Piri Reis map, which was used already long time before Christopher Columbus came to America. And you can see how perfect this map was already in the beginning of the 16th century, showing part of Europe, of Spain, Portugal, part of Western Africa, and also part of South America. We do not know until now who was able to make such a perfect map already centuries ago. And on the rest of the Pirates map, which we do not show on this picture, you can also see the Antarctic without ice. And 1956, researchers found out that the Earth under the ice mass at the Antarctic is exactly like the Piri Reis map was showing. So this Piri Reis map should be at least older than 10 to 12,000 years. But the next question would be, who was able to make such a wonderful world map? On the left side, on top, you see Atlantis, done by Athanasius Walze Müller. And the map is the other way around. He did it the other way around. And you can see the continent between Europe, Africa, and also America. And you can see on the left side down, different sides of a huge stone world map. This stone world map was found in 1984 while gold digging in Ecuador in an underground tunnel system with other 350 artifacts which do not really fit any known and existing South American pre-Columbian culture. On this stone map is a natural quartz line, a white one, and this is the front side of the world stone map, and you can see approximately in the near east, close to Saudi Arabia, 
you can see an inlay as an eye. And from this eye to the right and to the left is a natural quartz line going on the right side over India, Thailand, and also there is a long island on the right side, which Professor Kimura's research gave him the statement that from the northeast Japanese island until far down after Taiwan, once there existed a huge continent. But then this world map must be older than at least 10 to 12,000 years. And here is the back side. And you can see on the right side coming the quartz line passing in the Atlantic, a continent, Atlantis, which in our days does not exist anymore. Then the white line is crossing part of South America. And here you have a close up and you can exactly see the Bay of Guayaquil, an inlay going up to north and a round inlay showing exactly the place where there were found those artifacts and there is also the best quality water worldwide existing. One other very interesting artifact found on the same place in Ecuador is the so-called pyramid with the eye. The eye is an inlay, the stone is grey and white and you have 13 steps and it looks exactly like the pyramid with a shining eye on the one US dollar. If you put this pyramid under black light, the eye is shining very strongly and it looks really like an eye, but not real like a human eye. Here you have a close up of the eye and you can see the colors of the inlay. On the bottom of this pyramid, you have the inlay in little gold plates showing the Orion star constellation and you have unknown writing. The translation of Professor Kurt Schildmann, who was the president of the German Linguistic Association and he was perfect in more than 40 languages, he was able to translate this writing. He called it pre-Sanskrit because it is older than the oldest writing and the translation of these four letters you can see here his translation is the son of the creator comes as we found the same writing on stones in certain countries like ecuador colombia illinois united states Glosel, france malta in the mediterranean turkmenistan australia and in southern Calabria, Italy, just a few years ago. Always there are stones and ceramics, terracotta, with the same writing. That means this writing existed once worldwide, and that means there must have been a global civilization older than Sanskrit, older than 6,000 years. And Professor Schildmann also told me that this writing has a little similarity to the Indus writing and also to the Easter Island writing. And as he said, this is older than Sanskrit. He called this writing pre-Sanskrit. On this stone, you can see on the top the two eyes. And then you see the right hand holding the pyramid and putting the left hand on top of the pyramid. That means showing how to use this pyramid with the eye. On this stone you can see an end carving, sitting a man on a stone holding the pyramid exactly as it was shown on the artifact before. From his eyes are going rays out and on the right side you see two bowed persons. On his head he has something like a small helmet and from this helmet goes up like an antenna to a strange object over him. And here you have the photo of the discovered helmet. We could not yet make a metal research or checking what kind of metal was used, but you can see in the center of the helmet that something is missing and that might have been this kind of antenna which was shown on the artifact before. Another very strange finding from the same place 
is one big jade cup and 12 little jade cups. As the 12 cups are man-made and each one is a little bit different in size, if you fill them up perfectly with water and you put the 12 cups of water inside the big cup, the big cup is completely filled. The next strange thing is that you can see on the little cups numbers which are looking like the Mayan numbers but if you compare them with the Mayan numbers you find out that there are some little differences. And on the big cup you can see a perfect inlaid star constellation also showing the Orion and other stars. And inside the big cup it is very, very magnetic and outside the cup nearly nothing. Professional geologists are saying this is impossible because if a stone has metal particles inside the stone, it must be same magnetic from both sides. Here you have a close-up of the big cup and you can see a perfect inlay of star constellations and they are shining very brightly if you put black light on it. Here you have some small cups that you can figure out more clearly the style of the numbers inlaid in a strange material also shining under black light. That's another piece, a jade plate with the same star constellation inlay like on the big cup and two persons facing the sky and on the next picture you can see that also the eyes of these two statues and the star constellation is shining very strongly under black light. This was once a hard formed brown stone changing the color in the center of the stone into black which usually in nature does not happen and you can see if you look very close you can see a face with closed eyes, with a mouth, the nose, a long beard and long hair. On the left side, the face and also the stone is broken. This is the reverse side of this stone. You can see a spiral and a triangle. The center of the triangle is very magnetic, also shining under black light. Here we have the back side of a cobra. The cobra never existed in South America but this one was found at the same place. On this side of the cobra head you have 33 lines in line. So 33 is also a very mystical number since long long time and on the left side and right side you have seven points inlaid and maybe these are the chuck at the beginning of the 20th century in Austria. That means it was impossible inside a statue with the age of approximately 17,000 years. But when I called immediately Professor Pitoni, he was laughing and he said, I'm a geologist. If a statue is making a strange sound, I do not open it just right away, but I did several x-rays and you can see here on the right picture one of the x-ray photos and you see that inside the closed statue already the round ball, the chrome steel ball was existing. On this x-ray photo you can see exactly and also Professor Pitoni saw that this statue in former days already was opened but perfectly closed again and he called a specialist who opened it exactly concerning this photo, the small stone ball which was closing the hole inside and you can see that the metal ball was already existing. Some of you might have watched several pictures, photos on the internet of giants, giant skeletons found in desert in India, in China and other places. Most of those photos were competition photos to present Photoshop. Perfectly done. 
I also was quite impressed when I received first time one of those photos. But these photos I'm showing you now, they are definitely not coming out from a Photoshop competition. These photos are real skulls and skeletons. This skull was found in a tunnel system underground in Colombia. The skull is dated up to 11,000 years. The skull is bigger than normal skull and the front teeth of the jaw are lined up in a different way than our teeth. Something that occurs to me here is that there's a very strong pronounced jaw. It's a very prominent jawline, very prominent chin. And here you see a photograph that was shown to us by a Project Camelot insider. Now this isn't a real photograph. This is a scene from the old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Conan the Barbarian. And what you're seeing here is a special effect on the actor James Earl Jones. The critical thing here is the shape of the jawline. Our witness, who had spent time with the Anunnaki in real time, in the present day, said that one of the things that characterizes them, besides their size, which he says was eight or nine feet tall, he said they're very large and they're very strong and they look larger than that, but that's round about their height, which matches exactly the 2.6 meters that Klaus has been talking about. He said it's a very prominent, strong jawline, and this is what strikes me about these skeletons, these skulls here that we're looking at right now. Didn't know No, that. you need to know this. Back to class. So once again, here you have a very old photo done in a museum in La Valletta in Malta. And it shows several long skulls. And the explanation is deformed skulls, but they are very long going to the back. This is one of several very, very strange skulls. They are presented in a small museum in Ica, in Peru. Ica is located close to the famous Nazca lines, and the museum is called Museo Maria Reiche. The German lady who was researching her whole life about the Nazca lines, and in this museum you can see the most strange skulls I ever saw, all found in this area close to the Nazca lines. So the question is, what kind of humans were living there and how did they get those skull forms? And especially this one, definitely several doctors and experts told me it would not be possible to create such a kind of deformation because through deformation you do not get the double bone material on the skull and on this skull even you have particles of the skin and hairs and I think it would not be difficult to do a age dating and especially a DNA analysis of this skull. On this picture I show you some legendary skeleton forms of giants in the year of 1964 in the south of Ecuador in the province Loja there broke down a part of a mountain platform and Father Carlos Vaca who was working as a priest in hospitals he was called to this place and he found the broken bones of a giant. Good. Well Klaus I asked you if you would take us on a journey and for the last nearly an hour I think it is you've taken us on a fascinating journey not only around the world but through time back as long ago as 17,000 years and it's a real reminder of how little we know about what our history really is these are important pieces of an important puzzle and you're doing an enormous amount to raise people's awareness 
of what it is that we're not shown in many museums, what it is that we don't read in anthropological textbooks, and what it is that many university professors still refuse to recognize. And thank you so much for your part in helping to raise our own understanding of our history on planet Earth. Klaus, thank you.